All right, we're going to look at evaluating the deductive argument using another method called truth tables. And so again, just like before, we will be looking at two premises or so, could be more, and then a conclusion. So with the truth tables, what we're going to do is rewrite each of the statements in symbolic logic. So for the first one, it says, if you brought bread, if you bought bread, so we're going to say the bought bread is going to be our, we'll call it B. Um, then you went to the store, so we're going to say um, you went to the store is going to be, we'll say S for store. So if then, so we're going to see B implies S is our conditional. Um, for the next one, it says you bought bread, so we already had that as a statement, so we'll write that as D. And then you went to the store, that was already our statement, S. So what we want to do to test that validity is we're going to look at the combination of these premises if it implies the conditional. That is, we want to show that B implies S and B, so those two premises together, will get us our conclusion. And let me put some parentheses in here just to keep track. And we're going to take all of that, put the big brackets on there just because we want them to imply that conclusion. So what we want to have happen is to have all trues um, for this statement. So let's um, kind of start with, we need to know B and S, and then we'll look at B implies S. Then we'll put that together with the and B. And put my parentheses in here so there's no confusion. And so then once we have that, then we'll be able to go and look at that final conditional, which will be the B implies S and B implies S. All right, so starting with our B column, that's our first column. Um, I'm going to put our regular things here. We're going to say we have true, true, false, false to get all the options that we have when we have two um, statements, B and S. So we'll put true, true, false, false. And then for the S statement, we'll put true, false, true, false. And that will work through all the different ways that we could have B and S happening. So remember for the conditional, that's our third column here. For our third column, we are only... Um, false um, <clears throat> if we start with um, the if part being true and the conclusion being false. So that's going to be our big F here. Um, and then everything else is true. And so then when we're looking at the conditional and B, so we're trying to see when B and the conditional, the first and third columns, um, the only way that the, the conjunction is true is if both the things are true. So the only thing we're going to get here is um, the top row. Everything else will be false. Because again, in order to be true with that conjunction or that and statement, you have to have both parts being true. And that only happens with our first row. All right, now for our last one, we are looking at this last conjunction um, for our hypothesis of that conditional. And so um, as long as true gets us true, so let's see that first row, true gets me true, that is going to be true. Now the last three are all falses here for the conjunction, so the false can imply really anything. So false getting you false is going to be true, false getting you true is also going to be true, and the last one, false getting you false, would also be true. So what happens is that as long as we have that last column there, that is our truth table for our statement, which has the premises together implying that conclusion. If these are all true, then we have that this is a valid argument.